my name is Ivan Spijarsky. I'm chief publishing manager at Ducky. Welcome to my election today. Uh, we are going to talk about CTR tests, statistics, correlation, usage examples, and most importantly, how to not miss a hit. You are free to ask any questions during the whole time of this uh, presentation. I'll do my best to answer them. You can ask in both English and Russian. And, uh, well, let's start. So, what is a CTR test? Uh, the idea came from the fact that most hyper-casual games are promoted with pure gameplay videos and what if we make a video of our future game without spending time on the actual build? Will it save time? Will it show anything? And the answer is yes, it will greatly save your time and it will show you CTR and CPC which can help you decide if you want to proceed with this build. And CTR videos are really no different from uh, ads in just a few exceptions. These are Facebook feed placement uh, videos. They only use one video format. It is 4 to 5, 15 to 20 second length. It features gameplay only, no modifications. Nothing like you need to have a 100 IQ to pass this level. Nothing like that that we like to put in our ads. It's just pure gameplay. It uses click optimization and it is different, it works differently than we normally promote games. It is slightly different audience, but it is still correlates. And you don't have to have an actual build in store. You can target any similar game and this will work. And at the end we'll get CTR and CPC, which are quite valuable and they can show if your game has any potential. And on CTR stage, uh, about three out of four videos will fail. So in three out of four times, you don't have to actually build, make a game to test its, its CPI. And how, how does it help us? How does it reduce time? Here is a typical hyper casual loop. If you start from CTR or a CPI, it doesn't matter. Um, you have to pass all stages of hyper casual loop and on every stage you have a chance to fail. There's a different estimates how much prototypes you need to eventually make a hit. Uh, the, the most common estimates are lies, will lie between 15 to 60 prototypes and we'll take 40 as an example. So let's say you need 40 uh, builds to eventually make a hit. And there's two different pipelines uh, here, shown here, uh, CPI pipeline. This is when you uh, start making a build right away. And let's say we are making a very minimalistic, very simple build that's only SDK, a few levels, core gameplay, nothing else just bare minimum that we need to test CPI and that the game will pass on uh, Apple or Google. And the other pipeline is when we take a CTR video. Uh, it takes about two to three days for experienced teams to make a video like that. And we test it on CTR and three out of four uh, videos will fail and only in one out of four cases we'll have to proceed with making a build and even in this case the build will take less time because uh, we already have a video we already have uh, some materials that we can reuse in the build and this will reduce time and here is a rough estimate uh, how both pipelines will work the first one uh, will require 40 prototypes, uh, six days approximately, and this will make 240 days total. And the other one is 40 CTR videos, uh, two days approximately, and 10 builds, uh, where like one of four will pass, uh, 10 builds, five days, and this will be approximately 130 days, which is really, really less than in the first case. So if CTR 
reduces time by that much amount, why not everyone is using them? The answer is on this slide here. So here is the here's the data for all tests we made for the last uh, two and a half months since we've changed our CDR test algorithm for the last time, and. It only shows uh, builds that we have tested for both CPI and CDR. It doesn't show uh, many, many, many prototypes that have failed on the CDR stage. And as you can see, there is a correlation. It's not really clear, but it's certainly a correlation. And it would be a much better correlation if not uh, a few cases in uh, the zones that I'm shown in red circles here and the first zone is not really interesting because it is a high CPI zone it's it doesn't bother us uh, it is because the Facebook algorithm needs sometimes extensive budgets and extensive time to properly learn and these are probably the cases when we just had not and haven't given enough time for Facebook to optimize but the other one here is uh, an interesting uh, zone because it is a potential hit zone. As you can see, there are a few prototypes here that have low CPI and low CTR. And they are all unique cases. We'll talk about them later. Uh, this, cases like this exist and they can happen with you if you are testing on CTR. So, I will explain later how to avoid such cases, but most importantly, these were the cases when we were aware that these tests, the CTR tests are not good, that we shouldn't approach them with our standard CTR test, and that is why exactly they were tested for CPI later and proceeded to the next stage. So uh, if we eliminate this uh, several cases overall the correlation will work perfectly and it is really important this this works it just you should be really careful with this so why no clear correlation there's a few reasons here the first one uh, when we use CTR it uses click optimization and this is a different audience this is the audience that likes to click this is the audience that might not be so interested in actually in uh, installing your application but it will more likely to click and the other type of audience is uh, the audience on CPI these are people that will more likely uh, install your game and this are, this are well mostly these are the same audiences but with slight differences so in some cases this can make a difference the other one is uh, CTR. When we do CTR and most publishers do CTRs, they use feed placement only. And this there is a reason for that. Uh, fun placement is not good for CTR tests, but feed is a standard. And when we use CPI tests, uh, we use all placements. It, it doesn't matter anymore. We, uh, we search for the best one that works uh, the best. And there is a huge difference between feed and fan uh, fan placements. We'll talk about it later. The third one is uh, the CTR test has one conversion stage, and CPI has two conversion stages, which is which means that your potential uh, player have to click on that first, but it has to uh, install your ad next on the next stage and in some cases your ads can be overly clickbaitish uh, they can have things that increase the chances of people to click like um, I don't know for example well let's not talk about here about it on our election but there are things that can increase your uh, click ratio and when it comes to application these people will more likely to drop so there is a difference and the last one is uh, which we talked before that uh, in cases of extremely high CPI 
Facebook algorithm will take more time to optimize and it's not worth uh, testing it to reduce uh, from two dollars to one point half dollar for example so uh, it, it makes no difference and let's talk about differences between Facebook audience network and Facebook feed first one and the most important one is uh, when we use feed it is a Facebook news feed it is in mobile application you just read news you scroll over and over and you can easily skip the ad you don't have to stop uh, there's no uh, there's no instrument that will stop you this is only the quality of the ad the the picture the interesting picture that will stop you and this means that there would be a sharp drop in the first two seconds no matter what you show no matter what you do and the Facebook fan is a different type of placement this is a in application placement it it is interstitial or rewarded video or other types of videos but most importantly uh, in, in most cases there is a delay before you can skip this ad usually it is five seconds if we talk about interstitials and uh, the whole duration of the ad if we are talking about rewarded videos so which mean this means that no matter what at least half of the people will see your ad and uh, most if not all of the people will see the first five seconds of your ad and in some cases in some games gameplay is hard to explain within the first two seconds uh, and it can make a drastic difference if we show five seconds of the gameplay for rare cases for very a narrow uh, type of games it's a really rare case but they do exist and we'll talk about it a little bit later uh, the next reason is uh, Facebook audience network is typically shown in applications which means that you already have a more core audience which can make difference if your game is a little bit hardcore for a hyper casual game like for example the first person shooters uh, some of them some of them might be slightly hardcore -ish for general audience and in, uh, in in case of Facebook audience networks they will likely have uh, more ch chances to pass uh, the third one uh, is that feed represents wide audience uh, which is um, well, which which is exactly what we just talked about so this is a different this is a wide audience this is a hyper casual audience uh, you you show it to all types of people in Facebook audience network uh, it will be it will be limited to people who use apps and it would probably be games other games like like you know like the one you're promoting or similar or just you know games so this is already a more selective type of audience and uh, well why not use fan in this case that the fan the fan has a high CTR it rarely goes below 5% CTR and it has it it costs more it basically costs more and uh, your your game will have um, less promotional options if you're not using old placements so it's better if your game has a feed high feed CTR as well but in some cases the game can be promoted with fan only so you definitely don't want to have a case when your fan CPI is below 0 0.5 uh, cents so you do want to know uh, 50 cents you do want to know that your game is like that and yes here is a demonstration these are two video curves uh, how Facebook feed and Facebook fan performs you see in the first two seconds this is the same video prototype in the first two seconds the, there's a sharp drop here uh, people just skip it no matter what you show them the sharp the, the drop can be different but in almost all cases you will lose 50% of your audience in the first two seconds no matter what you do 
And in the second one, you see there's a five second almost no drop here, and there's a less sharp drop, and like 50% will see your ad till the end. This really makes a difference in some cases. All right, so how to not miss a hit? Um, well, you can test with us. Uh, this is the, the most simple solution. We know how to not miss a hit. We had several cases where we identified potential hits without uh, going through low CTR stage. Uh, we identified seven reasons uh, for for your game to score low on CTR, but have chances to go to high to good CPI results later. I'll share three of three with you, the most common ones. The first one is what I've just talked about: uh, the complex ideas that cannot be explained in the first two three seconds. You actually have to go through the video ask a question, do I understand the, what is this game about within the first two seconds? And then you will go through five seconds and ask you the same questions. Is it more clear now? And the, if the, 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 right, the answer is yes, then you, you have to probably go for a CPI build or test with us first to understand if this is the case. Another one is, does if your video has an excessive amount of objects on screen, this is a different case. This is, uh, well, because the human eye, uh, the way we, we look through ads, we are naturally uh, more likely to skip an ad. If we see that this is an ad, we just know that this is not interesting, this is an ad, we should skip it. And you usually you have like a few seconds before the uh, the potential player will understand that this is an ad and it's not interesting. So you have to show something really interesting in the first two seconds. And when you have an excessive amount of objects on screen, it is it makes harder to read the picture. It makes harder to understand what is this game about. So uh, you, you, you have to use less uh, and or bigger objects or less amount of objects and you have to make a brighter picture so it's clear so it's better understandable the, the last one the, the the third out of seven reasons is that some type of genres and most prominently action first person shooters might have a more hardcore uh, audience within the core audience uh, of hyper casual genre so they might have more chances when they are shown in Facebook audience network and they will have uh, problems with feed promotion. But not all shooters, this is a specific case by case thing, so you have to be careful. Um, well, that's that were three reasons. And now uh, one last thing before we go, here's a good idea how you can use CTR tests, no matter what, if you believe it or not, there's at least one good reason to use them. This is A-B testing. In our experience, we found that all videos uh, correlate with CPI. What I mean is, uh, out of four videos, the one with the best CTR will have the best CPI, and this always worked no matter how many times we've tested it so if you if the if you are using a video if you are using uh, different variations of camera for example uh color, color schemes or gameplay variations uh the one that wins will show you the best cpi results later so with that with that you can test uh different uh, different things on early stages and for example if we are talking about color schemes or camera angles or even gameplay variations this can significantly affect how you will later build your game so this will save you a lot of time and you will know uh, from start which uh, option works best for your game so it doesn't matter if you do want to know a CTR if you believe it or not at least A-B testing will be really helpful for you. So here is an example uh, to explain how this works. Here is a prototype, a video prototype we made. And 
uh, there's different angles here and the difference between the one on the left and the one on the right is over 50 percent so which means uh, this is really different angles and they they will affect how you build your level this will make difference in how you build your levels so you do want to know what what type of camera works best for you and this is exactly how you can test it and it will be really helpful for you so yeah I guess yeah I guess that's it we've talked about everything you are now free to ask any questions if you or you haven't them asked them before I'll be glad to answer any of them you're free you 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 can reach out to me on social networks I'll always be glad to share with you uh, all the information in this presentation and even more and of course you are free to test with us uh, we do tests within just one day we are we're extremely fast and we provide analytics with every test so it is really useful you can learn a lot and welcome thank you very much have a good day now it's questions time hey everyone we're live yep. hello we're live <laughs> exactly and just a second so for those who have just connected to our broadcast I meet Ivan Spizarsky from Playdaki. We are having the Q&A session now, and you can ask any questions uh, about CDR tests or uh, anything relevant to this topic and about the cases of testing hypercasual games. And by the way, I noticed that Ivan Spizarsky is probably uh, one of the most active and responsive person in the uh, popular uh, Telegram chat, uh, hypercasual, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, so I'm sure he will be uh, glad to answer a lot of questions. Uh, a couple of questions. Um, just a second, let me see what we have here in our chat. Um, and before yeah, that, I can I, I like, can go yeah. I can go over over uh, the first two questions that were asked during the election. Yes, please. Uh, so the first one was about uh, CTR correlation when we have a, a high CTR and then if it correlates with uh, the CTR on the CPI test. And the, action, the answer is yes, it is uh, correlating, but there are cases when you might have a high CTR on a CTR test and then you'll have a lower CTR on a CPI test. Or in some cases it can be higher there's two different cases. Uh, let's address them one by one. The first case, if you have a, a good CTR on the CTR test and you have a low CTR on the CPI test, that means uh, that on the CTR you had uh, something very interesting, something very eye-catchy, something that people would like to learn more about. And it might not even look like a game. It may be uh, a video, uh, uh, a scenario, uh, made in the game engine that is interesting, like, I mean, you can make an interesting theme, a movie or something with your game that might be very eye-catchy for people, so they would like to learn more about this. But later, when they go to a store and they see your game, they understand that this is a game, and they would be less interested in this. So uh, a good demonstration of this would be if you run a Facebook campaign with click optimization, you will have very bad results with CPI, uh, you will have very few installs because people who click are not the people who like to install applications, but in most cases their interest uh, correlates one another. So if you are making an interesting game, then both audience will be clicking on it. So the second case is when you have a low CTR on CTR test, but you have high CTR on CPI test. That could be only in one case that uh, on CTR test, your Facebook is buying from Facebook audience network, which has normally high CTR uh, CTR numbers, and that is uh, a different case. So the other one was about uh, seasonal uh, seasonal prototypes, seasonal games. If it's uh, if it makes difference 
And the answer is normally no. Uh, there is no difference. And I would advise you against making seasonal games uh, because, for, for example, what we learn is that games about snow are usually working less, uh, less performing than games with a uh, summer setting or just no setting at all. And making uh, like a game about Santa Claus would normally be a bad idea unless you have a really interesting game that uh, is around the Santa Claus. So it makes sense to do such game. Uh, okay, so another one. How many color schemes settings are optimal for uh, A-B testing? Is also a really good question. So uh, you can try many different schemes uh, and uh, there are favorable uh, colors which we can suggest for a build. And for example, the uh, blue, uh, some green, some purple uh, color schemes usually work better. So we would suggest to start with uh, the most popular ones. Uh, you can also play with brightness contrast settings. And it's also very important to uh, make contrast on important objects so people will uh, spot them right away. So they, you will focus their attention on this. So you can play with different schemes and uh, the best number would be like four prototypes of four videos for an A-B test uh, for start, but you can tune them later. Uh, how do you know when to stop? Well, if you had made uh, one or two more experiments and then didn't uh, bring any uh, positive effect, then you would probably uh, are on optimal uh, stage now, so you don't need to do that anymore. But you can always do it later on a CPI test. That would be a good uh, idea to try different schemes because you can uh, bring different audiences with that. Okay, so, thank you. The next question is in Russian. Uh, should I um, address it in Russian? Or in no, no, let's proceed in English. Uh, okay. Or maybe the person. Um, we can try to make it both languages <laughs> because the person who asks is Russian speaking, but yes. the lecture is English. So, what are the requirements for the products uh, so that you could take uh, the test? And is there any specific checklist? What analytics? Uh, and the second one, what analytics uh, do you use? Um, okay. Uh, give yeah. based on the result on the results of the test. Yeah. So. For the first one, we really advise you to start testing uh, as soon as possible because uh, some teams do like to make polishing, extensive polishing for prototypes. And at a certain stage, polishing doesn't bring you any additional benefit for testing. So it is better to test uh, after you have a workable prototype that uh, shows gameplay that has uh, a certain uh, quality level, which is okay to test. And uh, there is no other difference. You can bring a video right away, just 15 seconds of gameplay, and it's already enough to test. And uh, what kind of analytics you can do the, with that? Well, at least at, at CTR, you can see the attention curve, the CTR and CPC of your game. And it is already interesting because you can learn how uh, audience reacts to your video. So you have different gameplays, for example, on a video, you can different uh, different curve reaction to that. So you can see there might be a sharp drop at certain point and your, uh, you will understand that this part of the game might not be as interesting, for example, or you will learn that uh, your audience drops at the beginning and you have a sharp drop. So that might indicate that your audience is not interested in the game. Or if you have a, like a very uh, very uh, good curve, so people aren't dropping on first seconds, and you have like forty percent of audience that are still watching your video, but they still don't click. It's also an interesting case because uh, this means that your you have your ID is eye catching, interesting, but not interesting enough to click. So there are different options why uh, such. Uh, such prototype doesn't work. So you have to approach it with various, uh, with different ways. 
-hmm. Okay, awesome. And uh, do you pay attention to metrics other than uh, CTR and CPI when deciding uh, whether to continue working on a game or such as IPM, for example? Yes, IPM is also important. Uh, it shows uh, your... Uh, so IPM might be very high if we are promoting on fan, which means that you have a very strong core audience, uh, but you might have problems outside of the core audience. Uh, otherwise, if you have a good IPM on feed, that is a different case. And the more IPM, the better. Uh, in some cases, we might have a high CPM, uh, for example, due to uh, external reasons like, you know, before the Christmas, the, there's a sharp raise in prices on Facebook. So in these cases, we can uh, focus more on IPM and it would be like a second metric that we will pay attention to. But obviously CPI, CTR uh, are reference metrics. And if your game has uh, very good uh, retention rates, then a CPI might not be as big of a problem. But certainly, if you are making a game, you definitely do not do want to know that you have a CPI of $2 before investing more time in this prototype. Sure. Awesome. Uh, please tell, and where do you test games? Uh, just Facebook or, for example, some other platforms or methods like TikTok or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah, so we, we test uh, on Facebook, but in rare cases when we have, uh, we understand that Facebook might not be a representative uh, way of testing, we'll switch to Snapchat and TikTok as those two have the, the fastest learning algorithms. And that might be uh, a second, uh, second platform to test. But Facebook in most cases is the most important one. Okay, sounds clear. Uh, thanks for all your time. We are come, I guess the time is out. Only yes, the time and, is up. Yeah, maybe you could uh, take your final word in this uh, conference. <laughs> yeah, well, it was really, really cool conference, and uh, I've seen so many cool actions. So I just want to thank you uh, for making such a great conference, and I just I express. I express my sincere interest in seeing more conferences like that. And I really, really wish you uh, that, that the next one is going to be even greater than this one. That's my final word. Thank you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure uh, that uh, the, there'll be a sequel. <laughs> we'll yeah, see. I hope we'll so. see. I hope so. OK, Ivan, thank, thanks a lot for your time. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye.